This is the third section of the probability generating functions chapter. And this is finding the mean and variance of a distribution using the PGF, the probability generating function. And this is where the probability generating function really comes into its own. And, um, you know, we can find uh, the mean E of X and we can find a variance phi X uh, very easily. So if we look at the first statement up here, if we take our probability generating function, okay, so we start with our probability generating function, we differentiate it with re respect to x, uh, with respect to um, t, yeah, because every term is going to um, have a t in it. So we differentiate with respect to t, then we basically substitute t equal to one. That gives us e of x it gives us the mean yeah so we take our probability generating function we differentiate with respect to x we substitute in one and we get the mean then if we look at the second statement here we can use our probability generating function to um, find the variance so we start with our probability generating function uh, what we're going to do, we need to differentiate it twice. Okay, so that's um, see a different color. That's this bit here. Yeah. So if we differentiate it twice and then substitute t equals to one. Okay, we get that first part. Now, the second part where it's got the first derivative with one in it well that's just what we get from e of x isn't it yeah that's how we found d of x so this is just e of x so if we found d of x already we just plug it in there and then this last bit here is e of x squared so it's useful to find e of x first from the previous step and then those numbers can be just substituted in so here we've got our probability generating function where we can differentiate it and uh, use that to find the mean and the variance. So the discrete random variable x has a probability generating function, the PGF, given by uh, this expression here. So we want to find e of x in part a. So if we want to find e of x, we need to differentiate our probability generating function so if we do that we'll have this constant of 1 over 100,000 times by um, that 9 plus t squared all to the power 5 differentiated so we use a chain rule I call it a chain rule so differentiate the outside uh, inside of the bracket doesn't change we multiply by the inside differentiated so it's 2t now we could um, simplify it, um, but since I need to just substitute t in, it's probably a bit pointless because if I simplify it wrong, I could get the wrong answer. So I'm just going to take my expression and um, substitute one in for t. That's by two times one. So let's see what we get um, right so I'm just going to type it in fully as it is I'm not going to take any chances with this so uh, a hundred thousand times by five and bracket nine plus one to the power of four and then times by two times by one and uh, that gives me one Okay, so e of x equals 1. And this is what we'll use for when we're working out var x. So we'll just write down that formula just to remind us. So we know we need to uh, differentiate a second time. Oops, let's put a 1 here. Sorry, x here. And we know that we substitute 1 in. 
then we basically add uh, e of x and then we subtract this would be e of x the mean um, squared so we know that well that's going to be 1 and that's going to be 1 because we worked it out from the previous part so we just need to differentiate a second time to find g double dash Um, of x at so a probability generating function differentiated a, a second time. So I probably want to tidy things up a bit. So I've got it in a form that it looks a little bit nicer. So I've got 5 times 2, which is 10. So I'm going to have 10 over 100,000, which is basically 1 over 10,000. So um, Actually, let's write down over here. So I'm just going to neaten this up a bit. When I differentiate once, uh, this simplifies to 1 over 10,000. Um, I've dealt with the 5 and the 2. So I will have 9 plus t squared to the power 4 times by t. Okay, so I'm going to use the product rule to differentiate this. And I'm going to use u as 1 over 10,000 t. v is going to be 9 plus t squared to the power 4. There are different ways of splitting it up. So u dash is just going to be 1 over 10,000. And v dash, using the chain rule, to differentiate this as part of the product rule is going to give me 4 bracket 3 9 plus t squared let's tidy up that 3 and then times by the inside differentiated which is 2t so I can tidy that up as 8t 9 plus t squared cubed so Let's now write down what the second derivative is. So u, 1 over 10,000, t, times by v dash, so times by 8t, 9 plus t squared, cubed, plus u dash, which is just 1 over 10,000, times by v, which is going to be 9 plus t squared to the power 4 and what we need to do is to put t equals 1 into that to work out what g uh, double dash of 1 is so that would be 1 over 10,000 times by 1 times by 8 times 1 uh, times by 9 plus 1 squared cubed plus 1 over 10,000 times by 9 plus 1 squared to the power 4. So I'm not taking any chances. I could work out this in my head, but I'm going to type all of that on my calculator just to ensure, to ensure I get the right result. Okay, so that works out to be 9 over 5. So var x our variance is going to be 9 over 5 okay so that's the double derivative the second derivative of 1 at 1 plus uh, the first derivative at 1 which is e of x which was 1 minus the um, uh, the uh, the mean squared I've just realized there should be a little dash here just in case you were confused, minus 1 squared. So just leaving 9 over 5. So we have e of x is 1, var x is 9 over 5. Okay, discrete random variable x has a probability generating function given by this. 
Okay. Where a, b, and c are constants. Given that the expected value of x is 7 over 6 and the variance is 29 over uh, 36, find a, b, and c. So this is going to be simultaneous equations, three unknowns. So let's start by writing down. We know that e of x is 7 over 6 and var x is 29 over 36. We know that e of x we get by differentiating the probability generating function and substituting in, in 1. So let's do that. So um, if we differentiate it first of all, that will give us, well, A will disappear. Remember, you're differentiating with respect to T. Then we'll just have B plus, and then it will be 2CT. Okay. Um, we know that when we put 1 into it, that gives us the means that 7 over 6. So basically, when T is 1, you'll get B plus 2C equals 7 over 6. So this is equation number 1. B plus 2C is 7 over 6. Now we'll move on to var x and we know that the variance var x is the second derivative of the probability generating function. I'm putting brackets in the wrong place. Um, I'll write it this way, plus e of x minus e of x all squared. Yeah, rather than writing like the g dash x of 1, because we know basically that's e of x. Um, right, let's get our formula then. So let's start by uh, differentiating a second time. Um, so if we take our uh, b plus 2ct, we just end up with 2c when we differentiate a second time, like that. But that's only part of the variance. So um, we can't write down that that equals anything. We know the variance equals something. So putting that into the variance formula, Right, so we know that we substitute 1 into that. Well, there's no t, so it's just 2c. Then plus the um, mean, which was 7 over 6. And uh, minus the mean squared, so minus 7 over 6 all squared. Okay, so we know that that is 29 over 36. Right from there that will give us this equation 2c minus 7 over 36 that's putting those fractions together equals 29 over 36 so that's 2c equals um, 29 over 36 plus 7 over 36 which gives us 36 over 36 which is 1 which means that c equals a half. Yep, so here's our second equation. Now what we can do is we can substitute that back into the first equation to work out what b is. So uh, sub into this b plus 2c equals 7 over 6. So we're substituting c equals a half into this. So we'll have b plus b plus two times a half equals seven over six. So that means that b plus one is seven over six. So this will give us b equals seven over six minus one, which is one over six. 
All right, so we've got our second value. Now, how are we going to get our third value? Well, we should remember that uh, when we take our probability generating function and we put one into it, we get one. So that's what we're going to do. We'll take our original probability generating function, which is A plus BT uh, plus CT squared. We'll substitute T equals one into that, and we know that's going to give us one. So that'd be A plus uh, B times one, which is B, and then C times one squared, which is just C um, equals one. So the, this is going to be an equation that we use to work out what A is. Now we've got B and C, haven't we? So the equation becomes A plus a six plus a half equals one. So we can work out A from that. So it's going to be one minus a half, which is a half. And then it's going to be um, a half take away one six. And that will give us a third for A. So A equals a third. So there we go. So we found the values of A, B and C. So two of the equations we got by writing down expressions for um, e of x and var x and the third equation we got by knowing that the sum of the probabilities is 1 that's when t equals 1. Right you should now be able to do exercise 7c on pages 1 3 7 to 1 3 8 so just as a reminder um, if we want to find e of x the mean then we take our probability generating function, we differentiate it and we substitute one into it. If we want to find far x, we take our probability generating function, we differentiate it twice, we substitute one into it. We then add basically the mean e of x and then subtract the mean squared because this is just g dash or uh, x at one and this is g dash uh, x one squared so we might as well just write e of x and don't forget quite often with these problems if you need a third equation it's going to be that your probability generating function at 1, when t is 1, will give you 1.